During the First World War, German U-boats hunted off the coast of the Maritimes. One ship was captured and its crew was taken captive aboard a U-boat right in the Bay of Fundy. And the ship's crew were surprised by what waited for them on board. You're listening to Backyard History, the hidden stories that happened in your own backyard. The podcast version of the weekly history column running in newspapers across the Maritimes. With your host and author, Andrew McLean. By 1918, as the First World War was drawing to a bloody close, the Germans had been using submarine warfare to inflict devastating losses on shipping crossing the Atlantic. There had been so many sinkings that there was a desperate shortage of boats and a surprising new demand for wooden sailing ships because they could be built more quickly. St. John's wooden shipbuilding industry was long since dead by 1918. Not a single ship had been built in the city for 28 years. So there was a stir of excitement in the port city when the construction was announced. Old men who thought they'd never work on such a ship again dusted off their tools. The ship, a four-masted schooner, was named the Dornfontein and it was built in only 200 days. Hundreds of St. Johners showed up to line the harbor to watch her be put to sea for the first time. The launch was a real event. It was a joyful break in those dark days of war. School children were taken out of class to watch the ship launch and sail away. However, The old men on the shore noticed something deeply unsettling just as the ship was launched. A large black bird landed on the ship's mast. This was, for superstitious old sailors, a bad omen. The Dornfontein was at sea for only two days when she hit a patch of thick fog between Grand Manan, New Brunswick and Briar Island near Weymouth in Nova Scotia. Just as the nine crew members had gone to the forecastle to have their lunch, a loud explosion shattered the stillness of the afternoon. A shell had flown over their ship. Then another boom rang out, and there was a splash in the water next to the Dornfontein. A third explosion shattered one of the masts, showering splinters all over the upper deck. Through the fog, the crew of the Dornfontein spotted an enormous submarine right alongside them. On the deck were six German sailors manning the submarine's heavy deck guns. This was the First World War, and U-boats weren't as sophisticated as the Second World War submarines were probably more familiar with. They could only hold a small number of torpedoes, and would usually surface near ships and attack them with their deck guns in order to save their torpedoes. One German sailor shouted in English to the Dornfontein's crew, Come aboard and be quick also. Seeing no alternative, the crew launched the lifeboat and rowed to the U-boat. The crew was led inside, where they walked through a labyrinth of tunnels in the massive submarine into its hold. For years... They had been warned about Germans by Allied propaganda, and they expected the worst. What they didn't expect in the hold of the submarine was to find a lunch of corned beef and rice laid out for them. At first, the crew suspected that the food was poisoned, but the Germans reassured them that they had no intent to harm them. It turned out that most of the German crew spoke excellent English and were eager to talk to the Dornfontein's crew 
about news of how the war was going. Their submarine, they explained, had been at sea for three months and was significantly larger than a normal U-boat. It had been built as a cargo submarine that would smuggle goods through the Allied trade blockade that was preventing not only war supplies, but also food from reaching Germany. It was one of only seven such oversized cargo submarines ever built. As the war progressed, however, it had been pressed into service as a war vessel due to the increasingly dire situation facing Imperial Germany. The Daily Telegraph and the Sun, a St. John newspaper, later recounted the conversation between the Dornfontein's crew and the Germans under the indignant headline, German speak sarcastically of Great Britain and United States. The newspaper wrote, one member of the Dornfontein's crew said to them that judging from what he had been reading in recent issues of Canadian newspapers, you are being badly beaten. Oh, that's all right, replied one of the Germans. John Bull is crazy, making at the same time an imitation of bull's horns with his hands at the side of his head. And Uncle Sam is windy. The Germans talked about having had come up from New York City, where they had laid mines. And they mentioned a ship called the San Diego that they had recently sunk. The Telegraph published this under the headline saying, More German bragging! The individual men on the U-boat from the two nations who had been locked in a war for the past four years exchanged souvenirs from their respective countries. They traded coins and postcards. One German teenager gave a member of the Dornfontein's crew a photo of himself and an address in Hamburg, asking him to send it to his mother in case this voyage should be his last. This camaraderie was interrupted abruptly when a German officer entered, announcing that they had taken all they could from the Dornfontein and she was going to be destroyed. The crew of the ship was ordered to their lifeboat by the officer who said, you know the direction of the land and you know the way the wind's blowing, so take to your boats. As the crew rowed away, the submarine disappeared under the waters, and soon after an explosion rang out. The crew watched as flames engulfed their freshly built Dornfontein. Now alone in a lifeboat in the Bay of Fundy, the wind soon picked up and the seas grew rough. The crew rowed all through the night, in the fog and in the storm. Tired, sick, and weak, they finally spotted the lighthouse on Gannett Rock, off of Grand Manan, New Brunswick. The crew were brought back to St. John, where they were interrogated by Canadian military authorities, and again later by reporters, who covered the story widely. What was excluded from the newspaper stories at the time was the German officer's ominous parting words. We have it in mind to pay you a visit in the port of St. John. For the next few days, St. John was put under strict blackout orders, with no light allowed to be visible in the city at night. The German submarine SMU-156 however, didn't go towards St. John and instead went south to harass Nova Scotian fishing vessels before finally returning to Germany. En route back home to Germany, the U-boat encountered a rival British submarine and, in an effort to escape, fled into an area known to be heavily mined. She was never heard from again. That was Backyard History with your host, Andrew McLean. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for another hidden story that happened in your own backyard.
produced by Jordan Lozier.